Just now we look at number seven to have them practice. Now, before I go on, and there was one more question. Now, please put all your questions in the leaders group. The question is, if the husband if the wife of a pastor is adamant and stubborn, how can we handle that? And I want to say that one cause is that the wife is really stubborn and adamant. Another possibility is that the husband doesn't listen to her, doesn't love her, doesn't care about her, and then there will be problem. So, uh, so the first the pastor need to listen to the wife uh, how can we uh, what are something I've done wrong how can I improve so are we willing to say that to our wife and say I want to work on the marriage how can we improve on the marriage and uh, so we're willing to listen and be willing to work on it so um, now if necessary if some of you find it very difficult, you can, I can do counseling with WhatsApp. So that way, um, that you can benefit from it. And actually, but basically, is I listen to both sides. First, I listen to the strength of both sides, and then uh, are, are willing to work on a marriage, because um, if, for instance, the wife is not willing to work on a the marriage, then I will find out why. Uh, maybe she said, I give up on him. Uh, he has not listened to me at all. He has not done well at all. Then, then I want to find out what exactly happened. And when I find out, I don't accuse anyone. I just find out and then, okay, we'll work on it. We accept everyone. So uh, generally, if there are problems long-lasting in a marriage, it's because the marriage itself has problem already it's not just a one-sided problem and I want to say this uh, for Washington uh, I guess you all know him because he arranged all these meetings uh, he told me that when he heard my teaching about marriage and he uh, handled his problem with his wife and his wife has told me uh, a number of times that he has changed greatly after he met me so it's workable it's workable if we're willing to change then the relationship can improve so I hope that we all have the hope that we can improve and then uh, you can ask him about how he handles his problem and then and you can work on your problem too and then if you have further question you can send it to me okay Okay, now we continue with uh, number point number eight. The counselor let them know how the relationship is how and how they can improve on the relationship. So this is an evaluation. After we uh, tell them, you know, the whole process is uh, we uh, ask them, are they willing to work on a marriage? Do they have hope in a marriage? Do they find strength in the other person? and uh, what are the strengths of their person especially in the area of relationship and then talk about the difference between male and female and then uh, how generally that the problem of communication and love affect relationship and and the words of grace and the words of the law and how to communicate with words of the grace words of grace more and then if we have to say words of the law we want to guide the other person to think and then to say in a gentle way and then have them practice talking to one another trying to handle certain problem and then after in the process and when they handle we can comment we can ask them question uh, what you just said do you, what do you think the other person feel how does it make the other person feel does it make the other person feel happy or not and if it doesn't make the other person feel happy, how can you rephrase it? Can you say it a different way? And then if he's willing, then how does the other person feel? The person feels happier. Now, very often I ask them, okay, uh, say something nice, appreciate the other person. And then when they say it, and then I ask the other person, how do you feel now? The, the person says, I feel very happy. And then uh, I'll say, please say, respond to him and say, you feel very happy that 
uh, he said that to you so this is how we uh, work on the relationship now it's very important to understand it first can come from the love in our heart a love for God and a love for people love for our spouse our marriage that our love motivate us to communicate and to adjust communication is the fruit of the love without the love communication is just empty it's the love the life our spiritual life that changes our whole life is our spiritual life that changes our communication with people so it's very important to understand that is our heart for people do we criticize people only criticize people or do we see the good things about people and do we guide them do we have the heart to say everyone has the potential to change God loves everyone and everyone when they're touched by the love of God they can change now many people witness the change when they experience the love of God whether they see Jesus or just in the prayer they feel comforted by God and then they are motivated to follow God so it's always love that change people now rebuking and the law can change people sometimes but it cannot be the long-term way think about you know think for yourself if someone continue always telling you what's wrong what's wrong every time it tells you what's wrong what's wrong does it make you feel good or motivated or if someone says I notice you have some strengths you have certain spiritual gifts I see that you have the motivation to serve God and I see that you're zealous for the Lord when you hear this do you feel more motivated and when 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 you hear that someone says to you God is happy with you and I'm happy with you what you're doing for God is wonderful this have greater motivation so we want to use this kind of motivation in our family relationship also so this teaching about the balance of the grace of God and his law is very important so this is the foundation of all my teachings because with that mentality then we can counsel ourselves and counsel people and then we can enjoy God that we can have, be strengthened by God to enjoy God and have strength from the Lord and be happy with every little thing we do for God so it's very important in our spiritual life that we live in love actually all the religions in the world only Christianity is from the tr true God and only Christianity has love and the law the grace of God and the law of God in a balanced way so it's a wonderful thing about God that he is full of love at the same time he has a perfect law but we're not motivated to obey the law just by the law we don't obey just because of the rules but we obey because of the love that changes us that we are motivated by God's love to change so I hope that you see that this is the most important part of our teaching and then you would apply it to your life and to your preaching and you can you know uh, write down your sermons to me and I will uh, respond to you now it's easier for me if you write down you know after you preach it you write down the points and then I'll respond to you and tell you whether you you're balancing the grace of God and his law okay number eight so let him know how the relationship is and how they have uh, uh, how they can improve the relationship so the counselor evaluates their relationship and tells them how they can improve and motivates them to improve and then the counselor gives them assignments to do how to treat each other nicely and to manage their problems so the counselor gives them assignments according to the condition of their relationship if they have conflicts easily the first assignment would be on how to avoid conflicts so if they have conflicts so they conflict easily about the cleanliness of the home so how to avoid and how each person can adjust now some men say that I will never do housework I think this is a you know not a biblical concept because if we love the wife as Christ has loved the church Christ did a lot for the church Christ gave his life for the church and he served the church all the time so as husbands too we want to serve our wife also even though 
The house chores could be the main responsibility of the wife, but the husband should also participate. So if the conflict is from the chores, I hope the husband uh, are willing to uh, do house chores together. And then the wife learn not to be critical. And so avoid a conflict. And they, if they're conflict when they do things together, then do things separately. And gradually handle the problem before they can do things together. Number two, if they can hurt each other verbally easily, the assignment would be on how to speak gently and guide the other person to change. So first learn to say words of grace. But they say it's hard to say because, and I have to say, first is from the habit. Second, they just don't have that love for the other person anymore. They don't like the other person anymore. So it's hard, very hard to say it. Then they pray to God, Lord, help me to love my wife, to love my husband, to submit, and then to really be willing to submit to God and to say nice things to the spouse so that the spouse will feel happy and feel accepted so that the marriage can be rebuilt so that we can take the marriage back from Satan's hand. Because if we continue to have conflicts in the marriage, then Satan is taking away our marriage. So we want to take it back from Satan's hand. We want to have love in the family. Now Satan takes away love from the marriage, from the children relationship, from the church, from our life. That's what Satan wants to do. He wants to take away love. God is love. You know, we, you read the Bible, it's full of the love of God. So it's love that motivates us. And Christians should be living in love. And the greatest of this is love. So we want to live in the love of God all the time. And then it can be rebuilt. So pray to God and ask God, Lord, how can I change? Now, I all, very often when I pray for certain people, I'll ask God, how can I relate to this person? How can I be, uh, learn to be nice to him? How can I guide him to believe in Jesus? What is the most effective way? So I ask God for guidance. And how can I communicate with my wife and with other people better? And whenever I send messages on WhatsApp, you know, I'll say, is this message right? Can I change it better? So that's something I work on too. Number three, there can be assignments on how to cultivate more love in their hearts by praying more for the spouse and thinking about the strengths of the spouse. So pray for the spouse and then, for the, uh, and then uh, think about the strengths of the spouse and say, she has done a nice thing to me. I want to be nice to him, Lord. Uh, help me, help me and give me strength. And so, so we cultivate more love for the other person. And God is happy and tell ourselves. God is very happy. And number 10, the counselor follows up on how they have improved or they have not improved and he then counsel them how to improve so one applaud them for f anything they have done correctly so follow up the next time when we see them how are they doing or with whatsapp we can ask them how are do you doing now if they have improved find out what they did correctly and how the inner attitude changed so two things the inner attitude is very important and then what they did change and then, then give guidelines on how to improve more and motivate them to improve more. And then if they have not improved, find out what happened and then counsel them to work on the problem. So we want to uh, follow up and then find out what they're doing, okay? So we finish here, but then we still have a little time. If you have questions, you can ask. And I'm going to uh, use some examples. Use some examples to... Uh, illustrate how to counsel. I want to say this, most couples that I counsel have similar problems. Most of them, the husband doesn't want to talk, doesn't want to care, doesn't think about the feeling of the wife and doesn't listen. Uh, and then also because he doesn't know what to say uh, that pleases his wife, and then the wife is not happy. And then the wife is very critical when he says something and say, why did you say that? And, and then the wife is very unhappy because wives want to look for 
words that show that he cares about the relationship that's the main thing why do husbands sometimes offend the wife when they try to be nice to the wife because they just said something that doesn't build up the relationship okay I use an illustration um, okay the husband did something wrong and then the wife says you did something wrong and then the husband try to say something correctly and he said well I really did not mean to hurt you I really did not do wrong I really want to do something good now what is this this is explanation this is what most people do they explain they explain I did not do something wrong now but the wife still sees that the husband is wrong because for instance I use a use real example is actually it's better for you to ask real question uh, real situation questions the husband did not respond to the wife when she talked to him and then the wife said why didn't you talk to me why didn't you respond to me and then the husband said I was talking to someone on the phone I was responding to the messages I was busy on my messages uh, I was busy on preparing my messages in a church I I was busy with other people so I did not respond to you so these are his explanations but does it make the wife feel good no now he said he's helping someone then he can say to the wife I'm talking to someone I'll talk to you later so he can say that this is very useful okay I'm talking with someone I'll talk to you later I'll respond to you later so this is very important skill to learn to tell the person right now I cannot respond to you I'll respond to you later and uh, when he's busy preparing for messages he can say I'm busy preparing my message I'll, I'll, I'll we'll have some time to talk later so he can do these things now but when he explained he explained and said I was busy at the time therefore I didn't respond but then the wife would say then you can just tell me you were busy and so you could not respond and you can tell me uh, we'll talk later but you didn't say anything so the wife is still unhappy so that explanation doesn't work so a lot of times husbands want to explain why they behave a certain way trying to prove that they are right that's you know that's a problem when we try to prove that we are right that means we did not admit our fault we can say I'm sorry I was busy at that time I didn't uh, I didn't respond to you I should have told you that I will talk to you later about it and then afterwards I should have immediately come back to you but I forgot about it please forgive me I'm sorry I let's talk about it now now so the husband can say something like this I forgot to respond to you I was too busy I'm sorry about that to say sorry instead of saying I did not do anything wrong you you're wrong you're angry for no reason so that's accusing the wife so the husband can say yes I'm sorry I did not respond to you and and please I uh, I'm willing to talk now and then the wife said now I'm in no mood to talk about it now if that's true then husband say okay fine will find any time okay so the what husband doesn't have to take it seriously but very often the husband will say now when you want to talk I didn't have time and then when I want to talk you don't want to talk then it's accusing we don't want to accuse we want to say okay uh, you don't feel happy now it's okay and uh, we'll talk about it later now actually for most wives when they're unhappy they like the husband to be around instead of going away now you can ask your wife most of them might like us to be around we might not talk we just listen or we just watch her be with her and stay with her and then she will feel better that we try to be with her so we want to respond to the person's desire he doesn't want to talk now fine that's fine okay we'll talk later uh, he wants to left to be left alone is fine okay well uh, I'll be with you later so we can express our desire without accusing people 
And then the other person doesn't have to take it personally. Now many people feel hurt because they take things they take things seriously, personally. The thing that when he doesn't want to talk about it, that means he's he doesn't like me and uh, he's angry with me, that is that means he doesn't like me. Now sometimes people are angry just for a short time. It's because they cannot handle the, the feeling. So we want to accept that. So now for most women they are unhappy because the men don't listen to them don't respond to their needs don't care about them don't appreciate them so we can think about these areas appreciate them can we start to say i thank you for cooking for me for caring for me for taking care of me for being nice with me for being gentle with me that you have done so many things nice to me so appreciate the wife and she would feel good even though if she doesn't say it now if she is cooperative then she would she say to the husband I thank you for saying that to me and it makes me very happy so that's building up the relationship so words of appreciation uh, words of willingness to be with her and care about her I care about you I want to know your hearts now some husbands are very afraid of that because they say, if I listen to her, she would pour out, wow, so much anger, so much frustration. Now, if she has so much frustration, those frustrations have to be taken care of. We cannot just say, forget about it, don't talk about it. They have to be handled. If we have done something wrong, we are willing to admit it. And then if she has unhappy feeling, then we want to find out if the unhappy feeling is because we did not care about her, did not listen to her, did not love her, then we will say, please tell me how I can love you better. What can I do? And a wife should cooperate by telling him, instead of saying, you're too dumb, you won't understand. Uh, or saying, you think for yourself. You know, The wife should guide him. Guide him. Now my wife did did a lot to me because men I told my wife I will never be like you I will never be like you I, I'm always a man but I like you to tell me what I can do to make you feel better and she actually she actively told me that okay uh, when she's unhappy she like me to do what and uh, she's happy when I admit my fault and then I'm willing to change to pay attention to it and then and then she's willing to stop now that's the good part, uh, part about her but many wives are not willing to stop right there when the husband uh, says sorry and then the husband says okay I want to work on it then the wife should say I'm very happy to hear that you're willing to work on it that's great wonderful and but many wives are not willing to do that so wives pay attention not to make the husband feel bad in the process the husband needs your guidance to be able to commit communicate with you in a gentle way uh, to understand your feelings it's hard for a man to understand your feelings now in Chinese we have this saying the woman's heart is like a needle in the bottom of the sea this saying is saying, if you drop a needle in the sea, it's very hard to find it. So this saying is saying, to understand a woman's heart is like finding the needle in the bottom of the sea. Is for a man, sometimes it's hard to understand a woman. Why is she unhappy? The reason may, mainly is because the husband doesn't care about her and doesn't remember her needs and her feelings and what she likes and then she feels unhappy but if the husband pay attention to her and remember what she likes what she needs what she wants and then spend time with her and then the wife would be much happier and then you can we can enjoy the marriage so the key to enjoying the marriage is to make her happy and then she'll be your best friend and she'll be your best supporter and then we can enjoy marriage and enjoy ministry together enjoy life together and 
there will be much less trouble. So if you want less trouble, treat her nicely. And for any single person, if you want to get married, before you get married, you, you must learn to communicate and understand women. And the women understand men. And then have realistic expectation from a man or a woman. And before marriage, it's very important to discern the person. Some people have no heart of love at all. They have no love at all. Then shouldn't, you shouldn't marry the person because skills can be learned. Communication may, can be learned. But love is very hard to learn. It's a life. Now, some people would uh, uh, build up life. Uh, I mean, build up their love for God and for people. Some people can learn to do that. But generally, it's hard for many people to learn it. When a person is changed by God, then he can change gradually. <clears throat> okay, it's already time. Now, I want to name, uh, say another example before I stop. I've counseled many couples, so I have many examples in my mind. One time, I saw a, a wife came to me and then said to me, um, I'd like you to counsel me and my husband. What happened was, a few years ago, now before that, that relationship was very, very wonderful. They really enjoy each other. But one time, the wife went away home, went to her home, and then when she came back, she found that the husband has let his previous wife come to stay in his home. And he has his parents there too. And the, wife, the ex-wife says that she wants to come to be with his parents. And, uh, and the wife was very angry. And then she went away. And she took a train and on the way of the train she was crying all the way and every time she traveled on that route she cried every time and then from then on the relationship was never good and then every time when she talked to him he just said nothing 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 we didn't do anything she just want to see my parents that's all and then the wife says you always say nothing and I suspect something and then so the husband doesn't know how to handle and the wife is always angry so I listened to them and then I asked the husband okay why did why did your wife ex-wife come back and he said well because she wanted to see my parents and she heard that my uh, my wife went away so it's a good time for her to come and be with the parent, uh, his parents. So I said, um, can you understand? My question is, can you understand your wife when she heard that your ex-wife came back? Can you understand your wife, how unhappy she was? And he said, now I understand. Can you tell your wife? So he told his wife, and he held her hand. She said, he said, I'm sorry I did not think about your feeling. I, I did not think about, I just let her see my parents. I did not think of that causing you to feel unhappy. When I said, and every time, you know, I guide him to say this, that every time and I said, it's nothing, nothing, and then you felt there's something. But actually, it's, I was you know listening to her and it's foolish to do that you know I could let her see my parents when you are here and I asked you is it okay for her to come to see my parents instead of doing it when you're away so I'm very sorry I hurt your feeling and I'm willing to build up the relationship again and then I asked them are you willing to build up the relationship and they both said yes and then that solved the, the problem because the husband always said nothing, nothing, nothing. And that, that offends the wife more because the wife said, you said nothing and then you did something in secret. It's not nothing, it's something. So when he admitted that, yeah, I'm sorry I hurt you. I make you feel unhappy. 
when he admitted that, when he did that, it, he did not think of his wife and it hurt his wife and he was sorry about that and he doesn't want to do that anymore. And then the wife can forgive him because then he admitted his fault instead of explaining away and saying nothing, nothing. So when he admitted it and explained what happened, what was his foolishness when he let his... Now this explanation is different. He's explaining his foolishness. He did not think of that hurting his wife. And then he just did it, just responding to the request of the ex-wife. And so he realized he did something wrong and that hurt her and he felt very bad about that. And then he felt sorry and asked her to forgive him and she was willing. And the afternoon she came back to me and said, wow, now we are fine again. We are like before now, like our relationship in the past now. So that changed instantly when the husband admitted his fault instead of saying it's nothing. So we need to learn to say, Yes, I'm sorry. I did not listen to you. I did not uh, talk to you. Please, I'm sorry. So, for the pastor asking the question, if the wife of the ha pastor is always stubborn, we can admit our fault and gradually guide the upper, other person to change. Uh, so, we first see our fault, and then if we admit our fault, now, if she doesn't accept it and then say, okay, tell me what I can do. Please tell me what I can do. And then, and then the wife can respond. And then, then he works on it. Then the relationship can be improved. So I hope that you see that uh, admitting a fault and be willing to listen and to care for the person and say, I really care about you. I want us to have a happy marriage. I want to build up the marriage that would build up the relationship. So I hope you understand this. I uh, ho uh, hope that it will help you. Okay, here is a question here I want to answer. You've been counseling for long. Most of the time when men don't apologize to their wives when they've done wrong, what's the problem with men? Is it rudeness or ignorance? Um, <clears throat> I think it's pride, mainly pride and ignorance. Pride that they don't want to admit the fault. Ignorance is that they didn't realize that the faults can cause so much problem. Uh, they don't think that talking to the wife, listening to the wife is so important. They didn't realize the importance of communication. They didn't realize the importance of admitting the fault and and naming the feeling of the wife, saying, oh, I did that and made you feel very unhappy and made you feel insecure and made you feel unhappy about the marriage. I'm very sorry about that. Name her feeling. And, and then husband can ask too, when I did this, how, how did it make you feel? Please let me know. And I'm sorry about that. I'm willing to work on it please help me. And the husband can say, please help me. Now that is humbling himself. Please help me to be a better husband. That way, it's humility always open up the way for communication. So I'm sorry, please help me. Help me to improve. I want to improve. Please help me. So I hope in the two weeks before the next session, you work on a relationship with your spouse and you can start to help s some couples in your church and help them, counsel them and see if you can help them in the relationship. And then you can ask me, send me questions and then I can respond to you next time. Okay? God bless you and I have a short prayer now. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us marriage. Lord, help us. Because of our sins, we have fall, fallen short of the glory of God. That we have not care about the feelings of people. We have not had much love. We don't listen. We don't think about the feelings of the other person. Please forgive us and give us love. 
and give us humility that we're willing to admit a fault and we're, we're willing to ask our spouse to help us to be a better spouse Lord help us Lord give us humility give us motivation because when we preserve our marriage then we can enjoy our marriage more and we can enjoy our life more and we can enjoy our ministry more but if we have problems in our marriage we will feel painful we'll feel painful in a whole person our marriage and our ministry everything will suffer Lord help us restore our marriage that will be pleasing to you help us to humble ourselves and not to suppress our spouse not to reject our spouse but to make them feel loved and cared for and respected and Lord help the wives to listen to the husband and be, be uh, gentle with the husband and be willing to guide the husband and to be willing to forgive the husband when the husband admit his fault Lord give us the motivation to love and not to nag to care to communicate to listen thank you Lord you're wonderful you always listen to us you care about us you change us you are so wonderful thank you Lord thank you Jesus you're so wonderful Lord in Jesus name we pray amen hallelujah so I hope that it will help your marriage and help your relationship with people not just marriage but relationship with other people that will listen to them respond to them we build up good relationship with them then our whole life will go higher and higher so God bless you and God be with you and do practice communicating with your wife loving your wife praying for praying for your spouse that I can love him or her more I want to build up the relationship to build up the the marriage and the, my whole life and build up the ministry and help the couples in our church to grow now this is a good topic for preaching but you want to divide it into different sessions different messages to help uh, marriages to build up and have uh, you can even have marriage uh, workshop to invite the, the, uh, the couples to come together and and uh, practice uh, positive communication words of grace and gentle words of the law words of the law in a gentle way and how to resolve problem so practice that uh, in the in the uh, couples workshop and also premarital counseling is very important when people uh, tell your church members when they are considering marriage uh, or dating they should come to you and tell you and then you yourself or someone else should counsel them how to build up a uh, premarital uh, relationship uh, so prepare for a godly marriage 